They're targeting the South Pole to land to check and verify that there's water there inside those craters. We not only think there is theoretically, we have some measurements that there's likely water there. And now we're gonna go and verify for sure. Because if there is, you don't need to bring water to the moon to drink. Space explorations to the moon have focused on regions other than the forbidding South Pole for centuries. The United States, Russia, and China have avoided the treacherous terrain, shrouded in darkness and mysterious water ice. However, India has risen to the challenge and landed its spacecraft, Chandrayaan-3, in this formidable lunar region. People are applauding. Let us all wait to hear from the Secretary Department of Space. This unprecedented achievement grants us privileged access to the inner workings of outer space and the concealed knowledge that NASA has kept hidden for decades. What revelations about our solar system does Chandrayaan-3 hold? Is the moon now conducive for sustaining human life? Join us in this captivating video as we finally unravel the mysteries NASA once kept hidden, revealing its shocking impact on our celestial neighborhood. The moon is an incredibly harsh environment with extreme temperatures, a lack of atmosphere, and constant radiation exposure. These unforgiving conditions make it a difficult place for human exploration and habitation. However, due to its unique location, the moon holds many secrets about our solar system, enticing scientists and researchers. Following the historic Apollo 11 mission, limited information regarding lunar discoveries has been shared with the public, leading to heightened anticipation when India announced its intention to explore the moon's south pole. The recently released footage from the Chandrayaan-3 mission has exceeded expectations, revolutionizing our understanding of the solar system and prompting a fervent quest for the mysteries it unveils. Before delving into the discoveries and secrets withheld from previous moon explorations, let us first explore the wonders of Chandrayaan-3. In 2023, India opened a new frontier in space exploration with its Chandrayaan-3 mission. The world watched as this mission aimed to touch down near the moon's elusive South Pole, a region shrouded in mystery and holding promises of significant scientific revelations. Chandrayaan-3 is the nation's third lunar mission. It was the first mission to land near the South Pole. It is part of India's ambitious space program, which began in 1962 with its first rocket from a fishing village called Thumba. Since then, India has launched numerous satellites, rockets and probes into space, establishing itself as one of the world's leading spacefaring nations. The first lunar mission conducted by India was Chandrayaan-1, which was launched in 2008. It orbited the moon for nearly a year, collecting valuable data and images of the lunar surface. It also carried a small moon impact probe, which intentionally crashed into the South Pole region and detected traces of water molecules in the lunar atmosphere. Chandrayaan-2, India's second lunar mission, was launched in 2019. The Chandrayaan-2 mission embarked on a scientific endeavor to achieve multiple objectives of paramount importance. Its primary goals encompassed meticulously mapping the lunar surface, comprehensively studying the lunar topography, mineralogy, and elemental abundance, and diligently searching for water ice in the polar regions. The mission was driven by the noble pursuit of enhancing humanity's comprehension of the moon's origin and evolution. It consisted of an orbiter, a lander named Vikram, and a rover named Pragyan. While the orbiter is still circling the moon and possesses the best resolution camera for capturing images of our natural satellite, the lander and rover encountered communication issues during the final descent and ultimately crashed on the lunar surface. Undeterred by this setback, India decided to pursue its dream of landing near the South Pole and thus launched Chandrayaan-3. This mission is essentially a replica of Chandrayaan-2's lander and rover, with some improvements and modifications. On July 15, 2023, Chandrayaan-3 was successfully launched from India's Satish Dhawan Space Center. After approximately a month, it reached the moon's orbit, where it executed various maneuvers to adjust its trajectory and altitude. On August 20, 2023, Chandrayaan-3 began its final descent toward the unexplored South Pole region. 
the landing presented significant challenges and risks. Firstly, there was a communication delay of about three seconds between Earth and the Moon, necessitating the spacecraft to rely on its onboard computer and sensors for navigation and control. Additionally, the absence of a detailed landing site map compelled Chandrayaan-3 to employ its own camera and radar to scan the terrain and avoid obstacles such as rocks and craters. Moreover, the South Pole region experiences limited sunlight, requiring the spacecraft to rely on its batteries and solar panels to power its systems and instruments. Despite these difficulties, Chandrayaan-3 successfully landed near the South Pole on August 20, 2023. It transmitted its first image of the lunar far side area shortly after landing. The mission's rover, named Pragyan, was deployed from the lander an hour later. Together, the lander and rover initiated their scientific mission on the moon. Chandrayaan-3 has two primary objectives. Firstly, it aims to demonstrate India's capability to achieve a soft landing and conduct roving operations on the moon. Secondly, it aims to conduct scientific experiments to study the lunar environment and resources. To accomplish these objectives, Chandrayaan-3 carries 14 payloads on board the lander and rover, designed to measure various aspects of the lunar surface and subsurface, including temperature, radiation, seismic activity, mineralogy, and chemistry. One of the essential payloads on board the lander is Chandra's surface thermophysical experiment, CHASTI. It consists of a rod-like probe capable of penetrating up to 10 centimeters into the lunar soil to measure its temperature profile at different depths. This experiment provides crucial insights into the depth at which water ice may be buried and its availability for future exploration and utilization. Another notable payload is the Lunar Retro Reflector Array, LRA, comprising eight mirrors that reflect laser beams from Earth or other spacecraft. The LRA enables precise measurements of the Earth-Moon distance and facilitates tests of Einstein's theory of general relativity. Furthermore, it can detect low-frequency radio signals from the far side of the Moon, providing valuable information about its origin and evolution. The rover, Pragyan, also carries several intriguing payloads. For instance, the Alpha Particle X-ray Spectrometer, APXS, analyzes the chemical composition of lunar rocks and soil by bombarding them with alpha particles and x-rays. This analysis helps identify the minerals and elements on the lunar surface, enhancing our understanding of their distribution and formation. The rover carries the laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy, LIBS, payload, which vaporizes a small amount of lunar material using a powerful laser beam and then analyzes its spectrum with a spectrometer. LIBS enables scientists to determine the abundance and isotopic ratios of different elements on the lunar surface, allowing comparisons with Earth's composition. These examples highlight some of the scientific achievements made by Chandrayaan-3 thus far. The Indian Space Agency openly shares these results through its official website and social media platforms. The images and data obtained by Chandrayaan-3 provide valuable insights into the lunar surface and subsurface, contributing to our understanding of the Moon. What makes the South Pole of the Moon a compelling target for space exploration? The South Pole of the Moon holds immense scientific and strategic importance, making it a compelling target for Chandrayaan-3's landing. This uncharted territory has captured the attention of space agencies worldwide due to its potential for groundbreaking discoveries and valuable resources. The belief that the South Pole contains water ice is at the forefront of scientific interest. This precious resource could revolutionize future lunar missions by providing sustenance for astronauts, generating oxygen, and serving as rocket propellant. Chandrayaan-3's exploration of this region aims to study lunar ice's quantity, distribution, and characteristics, providing critical insights for future manned missions and potential lunar colonization. The South Pole is also a region of perpetual darkness and extreme cold, with certain areas never exposed to sunlight. These permanently shadowed regions, PSRs, are believed to harbor deposits of volatile compounds, including water ice, accumulated over billions of years. Chandrayaan-3's mission to explore these PSRs could unlock the mysteries of the Moon's geological history and shed light on the processes that have shaped its surface. Such knowledge is essential for understanding the formation and evolution of the Moon and other celestial bodies within our solar system. 
Beyond its scientific significance, the South Pole holds strategic importance in the context of future lunar exploration and potential human settlement. Several nations and space agencies envision establishing a permanent presence on the Moon, and the South Pole's resource potential and proximity to the lunar poles make it an ideal location for such endeavors. By landing at the South Pole, Chandrayaan-3 can contribute to global efforts in exploring and harnessing lunar resources, fostering international collaboration and partnerships. A successful landing at the South Pole would signify a significant technological achievement for India's space program. Landing a spacecraft on the Moon's surface is extraordinarily complex, requiring precise navigation, autonomous control systems, and advanced landing techniques. Chandrayaan-3's successful touchdown would showcase India's technological prowess and elevate its global standing in space exploration. Moreover, Chandrayaan-3's mission to the South Pole would pave the way for future lunar missions and scientific breakthroughs. The data and knowledge acquired from this mission would serve as a foundation for subsequent lunar exploration endeavors. Chandrayaan-3 can contribute to our understanding of the Moon as a planetary body and its broader significance in planetary science by studying the lunar regolith, geology, and the Moon's interaction with the space environment. The unique environment of the South Pole offers an unparalleled opportunity to conduct experiments and tests not feasible on Earth. The low lunar gravity, absence of atmosphere, and extreme temperatures create a distinct laboratory for investigating various scientific phenomena. Chandrayaan-3 can deploy instruments and experiments designed to study the lunar exosphere, the Moon's magnetic field, and the impact of micrometeoroids. These studies would deepen our understanding of the Moon's environment and provide valuable insights into similar processes occurring on other celestial bodies. Some notable people played major roles in previous Chandrayaan missions, which resulted in the success of the recent voyage, and Dr. Ritu Karidhal is one of them. Dr. Ritu Karidhal, fondly known as the Rocket Woman of India, has played a crucial role in Indian space exploration and has significantly contributed to the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. Her work and expertise have shaped India's space programs and missions. Dr. Karidhal is renowned for her contributions to the successful Mars Orbiter mission, MOM, also known as Mangalyaan, which marked India's first interplanetary mission. As the Deputy Operations Director for MOM, she was responsible for spacecraft navigation and mission design. She meticulously planned and executed the mission, ensuring its success. In September 2014, the Mars Orbiter mission entered Mars's orbit, making India the first Asian country to achieve this and the first nation to do so on its maiden attempt. Her spacecraft navigation and mission design expertise have made her an invaluable member of the ISRO team. She has been involved in various prestigious space missions, including Chandrayaan-2, India's second lunar mission. One of her key responsibilities was guiding the spacecraft's trajectory and ensuring its safe journey to the moon. Dr. Karadhal worked on the mission's navigation and design, meticulously planning the path the spacecraft would follow on its journey. How was Chandrayaan-3? able to achieve a cost-effective design and who were the masterminds behind it. Chandrayaan-3, India's groundbreaking mission, successfully explored the Moon's South Pole with exceptional financial efficiency. The mission, accomplishing extraordinary feats with only a $74 million budget, exemplified India's exceptional capability to blend cost-effectiveness and pioneering space innovation. Think about it. This remarkable scientific success cost less than many big films. To properly understand what this means, let's see the numbers revealed by the former chairman of ISRO, K. Savannah. The mission's overall expenditure was approximately R615 crore, $74 million. Out of this, the expense for the lander, rover, and propulsion module was around RS215 crores. In comparison, the launch services incurred an expenditure of about Rs. 365 crores. This efficient budgeting becomes even more commendable compared to the preceding Chandrayaan-2 mission, which had a higher budget of Rs. 9978 crore, $96.5 million, despite its failure to land in 2019. When juxtaposed with other international lunar expeditions, 
Chandrayaan 3's cost effectiveness becomes starkly evident. Russia's Luna 25 mission, which aimed for the same lunar south pole but unfortunately crashed, had a budget of $200 million. NASA's ambitious Viper rover project scheduled for 2024 will cost a whopping $433.5 million. China's Chang'e 4, which successfully landed on the moon's far side in 2019, carried a price tag of around $180 million. The secret behind Chandrayaan 3's budget-friendly success lies in its compact design. With a combined weight of only 1.4 tons for the lander and rover, Chandrayaan 3 was considerably lighter than many international counterparts. For comparison, NASA's Viper rover alone weighed about one ton. This strategic lightweight design reduced several associated costs, particularly those related to launching and fueling. However, weight was not the only advantage. Chandrayaan 3's financial efficiency was also attributed to its prudent use of existing technology. India utilized the GSLV MK3, the nation's most robust rocket, deployed in several preceding missions. The lander and rover for Chandrayaan-3 were adapted and enhanced from the Chandrayaan-2 designs, showcasing triumph over trials. The Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, is behind this remarkable feat. Established in 1969, ISRO has made remarkable contributions to India's space program and has gained international recognition for its achievements. ISRO is renowned for pioneering satellite technology and launch vehicle development efforts. The organization has launched numerous satellites for various purposes, including communication, remote sensing, meteorology, and scientific research. ISRO's Mars Orbiter mission, also known as Mangalyaan, placed India as the first country to achieve a successful Mars mission on its maiden attempt. This accomplishment showcased ISRO's technical prowess and ability to accomplish complex interplanetary missions. ISRO's commitment to space exploration extends beyond Earth's orbit. The organization has been actively involved in lunar exploration through the Chandrayaan missions. ISRO's achievements are not limited to satellite launches and interplanetary missions. The organization has also played a vital role in advancing India's communication infrastructure. ISRO has facilitated telecommunication services in remote and rural areas through its communication satellites, connecting millions across the country. This has contributed to bridging the digital divide and fostering socioeconomic development. Another remarkable aspect of ISRO's work is its commitment to affordability and cost-effectiveness. Despite operating on a comparatively modest budget, ISRO has consistently demonstrated its ability to develop and launch satellites and missions at a fraction of the cost of other space agencies. This cost efficiency has earned ISRO a reputation for being frugal yet innovative, inspiring other nations to adopt similar approaches. ISRO's achievements have not only been confined to space exploration, but also have had significant societal impact. The organization has utilized space technology for various applications, such as weather forecasting, disaster management, agriculture, and navigation. By harnessing the power of space-based systems, ISRO has improved the lives of millions of people in India and beyond. ISRO's success can be attributed to its dedicated team of scientists, engineers, and technicians working tirelessly to realize its objectives. Their commitment, expertise, and perseverance have propelled ISRO to the forefront of space research and exploration. While ISRO and NASA share a common goal of advancing scientific knowledge and pushing the boundaries of space technology, there are some notable differences between both organizations. One key distinction lies in the scope and scale of their operations. NASA is the world's largest and most well-funded space agency, with an extensive portfolio of missions, including human spaceflight, robotic exploration, Earth observation, and astrophysics. Its budget and resources allow it to undertake ambitious projects such as the Apollo Moon missions, the Mars rovers, and the Hubble Space Telescope. In contrast, ISRO operates on a relatively smaller budget, yet has achieved remarkable milestones with limited resources. ISRO focuses primarily on satellite technology, remote sensing, and exploring the Moon and Mars. Also, the structure and governance of both organizations are different. NASA is a government agency within the United States, reporting directly to the President. 
It collaborates with various international partners and has deep connections with the American aerospace industry. ISRO, on the other hand, operates under the Indian government's Department of Space and primarily focuses on advancing India's space program. It has also fostered international collaborations, but to a lesser extent than NASA. Chandrayaan-3's mission to the South Pole of the Moon represents a significant milestone for India's space program. It serves as a stepping stone towards its broader ambitions in space exploration. India has set its sights on expanding its capabilities and actively participating in global initiatives, including potential human spaceflight missions and collaboration with international space agencies like NASA's Artemis program. Is there a possibility of future Chandrayaan missions? Chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization, S. Somanath, has recently expressed the organization's interest in exploring Venus. He said, we have a lot of missions in the conceptual phase. A mission to Venus is already configured. Payloads have already developed for it. But that's not all. In 2025, India will launch Chandrayaan-4, a sample return mission to bring back lunar material from the South Pole region for further analysis on Earth. India intends to collaborate with other space agencies, including NASA and the European Space Agency, ESA, on joint missions to explore various aspects of the Moon. The resounding success of Chandrayaan-3's historic landing on the South Pole of the Moon reverberated across India, igniting a wave of national pride and highlighting the country's remarkable achievements in space exploration. The mission's triumphant feat cemented India's position as a formidable player in the global space community. It instilled a deep admiration and inspiration among its people. Chandrayaan-3's mission to the Moon's South Pole opened up a world of possibilities for future endeavors. The successful landing paved the way for potential lunar habitats, offering the tantalizing prospect of establishing a human presence on the Moon. This unprecedented achievement has sparked conversations about the practicality and viability of setting up research stations or colonies on Earth's celestial neighbor. One crucial aspect to emphasize is that, unlike NASA, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, has actively shared its research and findings with the public, granting them access. This transparency allows citizens, including students, teachers, healthcare workers, and others, to actively participate and join in celebrating the successes of the Chandrayaan-3 mission. It fosters a sense of collective joy as individuals from diverse backgrounds come together to appreciate the mission's achievements. As India looks ahead, the success of Chandrayaan-3 catalyzes further ambitions in space exploration. Thanks for watching. Check out the video you see on your screen right now. It's unbelievable.